Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I'm gonna to talk about some new and exciting features in a program that I've not only been recommending to people, but also using myself, and that's gonna be a program called Evoto AI. I've been using Evoto AI for maybe the past eight months to really speed up my workflow in terms of retouching my creative photo shoots, as well as retouching photos that I deliver to clients. So I was really happy when they reached out to me to talk about two new features called AI Color Looks and AI Backdrop Changer. I did previously make a video on Evoto AI on my channel before, but I was talking about other features as well. And they really wanted to focus on those two new features called AI Color Looks and AI Backdrop Changer in this video. So this video is actually sponsored by Evoto. So right now I am actually currently in Evoto AI. And the first thing that you're gonna see on the screen is a photo that I took recently at the Imaging USA Photo Conference in Dallas. I'm gonna be using this photo on the screen to demonstrate the AI color looks, which you can kind of think of as presets on steroids that's more customizable. If you don't currently see this section right here, then you wanna make sure that you navigate to that correct section called color adjustments, which actually has a shortcut of E. So if you're in any of these other sections right here, click E on the keyboard and you will be in the right spot. If you don't see all these different AI color looks right here, then you do wanna click this drop down menu right here and then click on AI color adjustments. Right here where it says AI color, underneath that is gonna be two sections, a recommended section and a my look section. The recommended section is gonna have all the different AI color looks that are already here by default. And the my look section is gonna have AI color looks that you create yourself. And the way that you do that is gonna be right here where it says upload references. You can upload a photo where you can sample the colors of that photo to apply to your own photo that's gonna be on the screen right here. So there's actually a couple of different sections within the AI color looks. One's called gentle, another one's called tone, another one's called film, another vibe, another trendy, and then finally a black and white section. I do actually wanna start with that black and white section because it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna click on that and then you can see that my photo becomes a black and white image. For any of the color looks that you apply to your photo, you can actually adjust the opacity and how much you want to apply that look onto your photo. So right now it is at 100%, but let's say for example, I wanted it to be a little bit less of that effect or even more. I'm gonna simply drag this slider right here to the right side or to the left side to kind of adjust that effect. And I think right here at 43 actually looks pretty interesting. So if I wanted to really have a black and white version of this image, then I'd be happy with this one. But of course I do wanna sample other AI color looks to show you guys how those looks look like on my photo. And you know what, let's just sample one color look from each of these different sections. So for the trendy section, I do wanna click on visual impact. And it does feel a little too kind of saturated and contrasty, so I'm gonna click on luxury texture instead. And this one I actually do like a lot more, and I think I actually will leave it at 100%. For the vibe section, I think I wanna click on warm cinnamon to see how that looks like. And I actually do really like this, but I'm curious about golden ray as well, so I'm gonna click on that. And yeah, I did actually like the warm cinnamon one better, so I'm gonna click on that again. And just for the sake of curious people like myself, I'm gonna change the slider to see how it looks like on the left side and how it looks like on the right side. So here on the left side, there's more of those colors that are already there. And on the right side, it's kind of desaturating the image. So I think I will just leave it at maybe like 95 and then, or 96, and I'll just leave it here. In this film section is a very interesting one called Olive Green Film. So I'm gonna click on that first. I actually do kind of like it. I think it's a little too kind of faded, kind of flat. So I think I'm gonna adjust the opacity of it to be like 60, 70%. And it does look pretty cool right there, but I'm also curious about the Nile Blue Film AI color look, so I'm gonna click on that now. And it is a pretty interesting result, but I don't think it's the best AI color look for this photo. Here in the tone section, I'm gonna start with Elegant Shades, and I'm gonna skip that because again, it feels a little too flat. I'm gonna click on Bright Minimal, and I do think I like this more, but I'm gonna click on Bright Blossoms to kind of just end this. And I actually like this the most, so I'm gonna leave it right here. So if I needed to choose an AI color look from that section, it would be Bright Blossoms. And then finally with that first section, that gentle section, I think I might start with Vibrant Warmth. And I do like this result, but I think I'm gonna just adjust the opacity of it to be a little bit less, like 69, 68. And if I were to use this AI color look, I would leave it like this. So like I said earlier, you do have another section called My Looks. So I'm gonna navigate to that section right now. And one thing that you're gonna do again, like I said before, you can actually upload references that you've taken yourself into Evoto AI. And you can see that it does support formats of JPEG, JPG, TIFF, PNG, and the photos can be anywhere from 512 pixels to 12,000 pixels. I'm gonna click on where it says my looks and you can see some of the photos that I've already uploaded into here. I found a photo that was kind of Christmassy in terms of color. There was also another photo that I thought was very warm looking, one with brown tones right here. And then a photo that I took of my nephew years ago that had some nice colors that I wanted to sample from. And of these different photos, I think I wanna start with the one that says Keandra Rain. So I'm gonna click on that. 
and it actually looks pretty cool like this. It's very dramatic. I think I want to adjust the slider just out of curiosity, but I think it looks great as is. And again, all you have to do is adjust that slider. So I'm gonna adjust it to the left. You know what? I think I would leave it here at 76 because it looks really nice. But just for the sake of showing you guys all the results, let me click on the other photos as well. You can see it does have a little bit of color from this photo, this Christmas photo. I'm gonna adjust the opacity to be a little bit lower, maybe to like 50%. And it kind of looks pretty good there. And then I'm gonna click on the one that says Alondra 105 and it's a little bit more muted there. I'm gonna change the opacity again. I think I like it right here. And then finally, I'm gonna click on this bottom right one where it says Ryan Natural Light. It is actually pretty interesting how it looks like right now. So I'll probably leave it like this. And in case you guys do actually like the colors that are showing in this preview right here, you can actually save those colors where it says use preview to create a reference. So let's say for example, you really like how the colors look like with my Ryan natural light photo at 62%. You can then click on where it says use preview to create a reference and it'll sample the colors in that photo, that preview of the photo. One other section that I haven't mentioned yet is actually right next to where it says color looks, there's gonna be a color match section. And in this color match section are gonna be different AI color looks that you can sample from. I'm gonna start with 35 millimeter film to see how that looks like and I will adjust it to be a little bit lower in opacity but it looks pretty cool and I think I'll just sample one more this story of Dunkirk one looks pretty cool so I'm gonna click on that and it's a little bit too flat and cold looking so I will definitely adjust the opacity to be a lot less and I think at 33 it does look pretty decent and now on the screen you do have a photo that I took recently in the past couple of days of myself that I took for a company that I'm working with and I wanted to use this photo to demonstrate the AI backdrop changer let's say for example that you wanted to change the background to be a lighter background like the company said, hey, this background's a little too dark. I need it to be a lot brighter or have a little bit different texture. Well, you can use the AI backdrop changer to do exactly that. Just like with the AI color looks, you wanna make sure that you're in the right section. I'm currently not in the right section. I'm in the color adjustment section. When I need to be in this section right here, which is background adjustments, and the shortcut is gonna be B. You do have three different sections right here, background adjustments, backdrop changer. So I'm gonna click on backdrop changer because that's exactly what I'm gonna go over right now. Honestly, changing the backdrop is a lot easier nowadays. So all I have to do right now is simply click any of the different backdrops that I wanna choose from. I can either choose to have a transparent background, a white background, a gray background, black, this backdrop that says Fabric 002, Brown 03, Gray 03. And if for some reason I wasn't happy with any of those images, you do have a section called More that's gonna have a lot more different backdrops to choose from. You have a red, purple, green, pink, yellow, brown, blue, gradient, gray, fabric, and black and white section. For this image of myself, I think I actually do like where it says black. It does feel very natural to me, so I do wanna leave it like this. If I did really need to change the background, I would choose this one. But let's say for example, you did click on Fabric 05 and did like it, but felt like it was a little too much. Well, you can actually go back and change the opacity of that different background. So you can change it to be anywhere from 100 to let's say, I think it actually looks pretty good at maybe 60%. So here is the before and then here is the after. Right now I did only go over the recommended section, but the my backdrop section is gonna be where you can import your own backdrop to use with this AI backdrop changer. And I'm gonna click on that really quickly to show you guys that I currently don't have any backdrops of my own in here. But as you can see right here, you can actually add up to 100 images with a max resolution of 10 megabytes each into Evoto. And the supported file formats are JPEG, JPG, PNG, GIF, TIFF, and BMP. If for some reason you felt like this photo could use a little bit refining, I'm gonna zoom in on my face right here and you can see at the edges of my hair that when I change the edge adjustments to be higher, you can see that it is gonna be a lot sharper. And at 100%, you can see it's the sharpest. But for this photo, I felt like it was more natural at zero, so I would go back to zero. Let's say, for example, you didn't feel like the backdrop looked good as it is. You can actually change the size of the backdrop as well. So I'm gonna do that by going where it says size, and I'm gonna start sliding to the right, and you can see that the backdrop is getting larger in size. And finally, where it says vertical and horizontal, you can actually change it to be more to the left or the right, or up and down. The final feature that I wanted to go over in today's video is gonna be what's called the solid background refinement. And specifically in that section, there's gonna be an option called distractions removal. You can see in this photo that there are some distractions in terms of lighting being in the shot. So all I have to do to remove those lights and those distractions is to enable the distractions removal. I'm gonna enable it right now, and you can see that those lights just disappeared. You also have the option to clean the backdrop a little, so I'm gonna enable that as well. 
And here is one more photo to demonstrate the AI solid backdrop distractions removal. Once again, I'm simply going to enable the distractions removal and now the lights are gone. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy this look into Evoto AI, specifically with the AI color looks and the AI backdrop changer. And I hope that it helps you in your own photos. For me personally, whenever I've tried to change the backdrop of my photos, I felt like I didn't get the shadowing right and it didn't look realistic. But with this AI backdrop changer, I felt like it does a great job. If you guys are still curious about anything that I talked about in this video, let me know in the comments below and I'll reply as soon as possible. I do want to say one last thanks to you, Voto, for sponsoring this video because I really do honestly believe in that product. Take care, guys, and I'll see you in the very next video.